Sean Tse, who is a father, artist, and community organizer. He is a member of the AYA Collective, which offers spaces to remember the emotional and geographic loss of Amaskuchi Waskaigen, Edmonton's Chinatown. They seek, to inform, uh, they seek to form openings for liberation and belonging. As, and as mentioned earlier, they contributed to the Paint the Rails project and book. So finally, I will pass it over to you, Sean. Thank you. <clears throat> um, thanks, Esther, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, we're kind of gathered here because of this wonderful uh, book that uh, John Humphrey Center um, has been able to uh, produce. Um, I'm really, really honored that, uh, uh, you know, I have some small contribution to this. Um, it's It's been really, really amazing to be part of this journey because it's not just, uh, you know, this book that, that, that is really important, but a lot of the really great relationships and uh, the being part of the process and having conversations and and learning about um, not just uh, being able to share my culture but learn about other cultures that are really really important to Edmonton's history so yeah thank you so much for for um, having me today um, and so yeah I think uh, I'll, just a bit about myself um, my name is Sean C uh, in Cantonese, it's Zhe Siu Long, um, he, him pronouns. And I was born and raised in uh, Takaranto, uh, known as Toronto. And my parents were born in Hong Kong and immigrated to Canada in the 70s. Um, so I consider myself like a second generation Chinese Canadian. Um, and I've been calling a Miskwichi Waskaikin um, you know, Edmonton, um, since, home since 2016. And uh, the city itself has taught me a lot about uh, what being Canadian um, has been about. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of my early growing up in Toronto, um, <clears throat> there's quite a difference in, in the way that I, I, I knew about um, Canada's history and and also it's just a very different culture than than Edmonton and I think that Edmonton has really um, brought to surface a lot of like the really important uh, reconciliation and um, acknowledgement of our indigenous communities that uh, I would say that growing up like these types of like that type of education wasn't available to me. Um, and so I, I think that it is really important uh, right now in the time that, you know, I'm looking at all you students right now, like the, 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 the access to uh, the truth and reconciliation and the truth of our histories is, is much more available. And so there's a lot that um, I think that the younger generation um, can, can access and, and be able to um, think about uh, in many different ways that than I was even raised. So, so you know, maybe this is also a way to say that I'm still learning, um, and there's still so much for me to learn um, at my at my age. And so, yeah, like even a lot of the things that I'm sharing today are are still a working progress. And I think that um, our city, like in in a many of the same ways, are trying to also figure out how to reclaim, um, just like the book says, reclaiming Edmonton's diverse stories. Um, how, how do we start to um, see these truths as our own histories and be proud of them, right? And not just uh, see ourselves, you know, I, you know, I consider myself a racialized, like from a marginalized community, like, how do we be proud of um, contributing and making making sure that that's known within the Edmonton history, right? Um, it, it's really interesting and serendipitous. I got this book uh, dropped off uh, by one of the other IM members, um, Wyling Lennon, um, who's kind of like my, my uh, I would say, auntie. And... Um, 
it Wiling works also in education and is is connected with the schools but I think this is really interesting because this book um, it's called the story of Edmund of early Edmonton and I I don't it it, it landed at Dover Court School at some point um, and it's and it's a history from 1904 to 1979 which is really interesting. I, I, you know, I'm guessing they took it off the shelves, and that's why I was handed this. But when I compare this book to this book, it's like the Edmonton that I know or see is very different. Um, you know, I, I, I would say that th this book is very, um, uh, I would say, very white. Um, there's hardly any recognition, um, you know, even up to 1979, any recognition of like folks of color in, in here. And we know that there have been, you know, contributions from uh, folks of color right from the 1900s, right? But none of, very little of that is, is recognized in here. There is one page here about Chinatown, but I would say most of it is about actually kind of um, really like novel stuff about the head tax um, and not so much about like the the, the positives of, of what Chinatown kind of brings. So I, I, I just want to kind of leave that note for you because, you know, when I when I think about um, history and how it's told, especially to, you know, the generations that are learning and, 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 and becoming new to learning about their own city, you know, so much history has not been surfaced, right? And, and so how are we as learners and as citizens, like taking that into account and being critical about the information that is passed on through our schools, you know, like, I mean, I, I think that, you know, it's amazing that you guys have such caring and loving teachers. Um, and, and we're all human beings, right? We all, we all have different access, uh, to different sources of information, but we don't know it all. Right. And so it's important to like do those discoveries ourselves and, and also like ask like really important critical questions for us to like learn more and kind of push, um, where our, our understandings and our truths of history can go. So. Anyway, sorry, I'm kind of rambling about that. Um, I'm, I have a presentation uh, and I will just share my screen if that's okay. Let me just get this going. Okay, do you guys see that? Great. <clears throat> So I think it's really important um, before we even talk about Chinatown um, specifically that, you know, Edmonton, Edmonton is on stolen land. Um, and so it, it, it's important to recognize, like, even though like Edmonton itself is has been a built up space, like there's a lot of important histories that and thousands of years of history that come before it. And so even when we talk about something like Chinatown, um, like me as a community member uh, must recognize and also acknowledge the important um, histories that come pre-contact and up to now, you know, and still now, right? Like in how is indigenous communities um, uh, being recognized and how are they also like resisting like some really important things that uh, you know are, are are injustices to the community, and so you know this shared history, um, it, it kind of boils back down to like how did we get to where we are? Um, the concept of terra nullius, which is essentially that our history is based upon like plots of land that you know. In, in in our case uh, here in Alberta, lots of it was considered empty and unused, and it was like the way for um, our governments to justify that they could uh, sell it 
and and essentially erase a lot of um, indigenous communities and and genocide towards them. And so Edmonton's story is no different that, uh, you know, certain parts of Edmonton was seen as 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 empty and unused and, you know, up for sale and, um, you know, like having ownership over it was was um, basically part of our histories. And so um, I know I'm not going to be able to get to a lot of uh, the Chinatown information, so I'll pr try to get through the presentation pretty quickly. Um, but here is a video uh, that we produced uh, as Aya that really goes and talks about like specifically Chinatown. Um, and so here, I'm just going to kind of go through it uh, pretty quickly. Um, so our first uh, entry, uh, I would say, of the Chinese community in, in Edmonton was in um, 1890. And so where you see like the circle is like where um, John G uh, was the first uh, Chinese person to enter. Um, apparently, he's from Calgary and uh, kind of fleeing from Calgary. It, it's been told because there was like a lot of smallpox um, and, and fear of smallpox. So a lot of Chinese um, community members were um, ostracized because uh, a lot of the mainstream society was very fearful of Chinese people to spread smallpox. Um, and so, yeah, came, came and set foot in Edmonton and started a laundromat. Um, and yeah, this is kind of what Edmonton looked like in 1890 when he came. Um, here are some examples. So yeah, like this is, this is where Jasper Avenue would have been, um, which is really, yeah. I mean, these are some really cool images. Um, let me just flip through this a bit. So yeah, our, our Edmonton Chinatown was like right uh, along, like the first one was right along Jasper Avenue and here circled that that would have been the, the very first um, Chinatown. And eventually, um, these are some other photos, eventually uh, Canada Place um, was announced by the federal government uh, to be built there and so um like literally where canada place is that that entire like block around um a lot of that chinatown had to be moved over um and basically as part of that plan um the city of edmonton created this uh master plan uh so that uh chinatown could still exist and we would have something called like a replace chinatown um, so that the federal building could go into the first Chinatown. And what's really interesting is like this, um, this like displacement of Chinatown doesn't just exist in Edmonton, but you'll see that um, in like big cities all across Canada. Uh, one good example in Toronto, for example, is, is the city hall that Toronto uh, has right now also displaced um, Toronto's first Chinatown. So, you know, you have, uh, you know, a recurring theme of Chinatowns being displaced by uh, government um, buildings and or um, types of strategies to, to move into the urban core. All right, so you have, uh, these are just some sketches from that original plan um, so when they when they had the plan, they had like all these great ideas, but um, not everything was um, could come to peace because you know things are quite expensive. There are a lot of resources. There's obviously a lot of um, different ideas that go go um, uh, come to like building essentially this little area, and so. Yeah, some of the different things that you started to see in, in the replaced Chinatown was like the Harbin Gate um, and the Edmonton Chinatown Multicultural Center. So a lot of these buildings are still um, uh, there. 
and and yeah we have a very active like chinese library um multicultural center um, there's also the freemason building and the g association um, over here and the edmonton chinese benevolent association so this this is our um, what we would consider chinatown south um, and yeah so these buildings all are still around and but have been a really important part since the kind of moved over to the replaced chinatown uh, Wong's Benevolent Association. And these are some newer, uh, in that South Chinatown, newer um, areas that are getting uh, developed, like Kanistanaw Park. Um, recently there was, uh, and still is, uh, some really wonderful events at Colab Quarters Art Society. Um, and of course, our great neighbors of iHuman. iHuman's been around, um, you know, not just in this space, but in another space in, in that Chinatown South area. And so as, as the, Chinatown's history here in Edmonton is really, really complex because um, not only is there that, that history of displacement from, from that federal building that I was telling you about, but there's also been kind of like a natural migration from the Chinatown South that I just showed you um, into what actually a lot of people consider as Chinatown, which is Chinatown North. And so the Chinatown North is actually where um, most of the, the, the businesses and where you can kind of do your shopping. And I would say it's like, it, it, it's more popular because a lot of the stuff um, in South Chinatown is more uh, around like social social organizations and name associations, which really are like nonprofits and kind of that um, and care homes like elder or senior homes. And so there isn't as much like consume consumerism, um, whereas here in like Chinatown North, like most of uh, what you guys probably know. And, you know, there's like Lucky 97. There's, um, you know, a lot of different businesses that are in Chinatown North that, uh, yeah, that we as citizens like to go to. So yeah, right now, um, in terms of like Chinatown, there's it, we are still going through like periods of trying to figure out how to um, sustain it. Um, you know, COVID obviously has been a bit rough um, for not just Chinatown, but for our city as a whole, you know, there, there are a lot of like businesses that have been struggling. And so as part of um, making uh, economic strategies and, and making the neighborhood sustainable, um, there has been this Edmonton Chinatown strategy. Um, and this strategy is really trying to figure out, um, yeah, how, how do we um, uh, hold space and, 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 and make uh, Edmonton, Edmonton's Chinatown resilient. Um, and so there's uh, no shortage of like different ideas within this, this strategy. And um, definitely you can kind of Google it and check it out. Um, it's a very city planning document, but I think it is really important um, as folks and citizens uh, get to learn about how our cultural spaces are are part of our city, um, you know, learning about the ways that the city and and also the relationship of the community to to help make these things happen um, is basically how the future of Chinatown is going to be. So, yeah. So we had like, for example, this. Um, uh, Chinatown Transformation Collaborative, uh, which is like a nonprofit uh, organization trying to help um, push a lot of the ideas of um, the strategy. Uh, and I'm also part of this um, Chinatown Greetings um, arts uh, platform where we're, you know, working with different artists to do fundraising for Chinatown. And here's kind of like a pop-up market at the downtown farmer's market. And yeah, this is this is Aya. So Aya has been really, really um, using uh, art as a way to spread awareness of um, what's been happening in our Chinatown. And so uh, I'm joined here with 
our four core members, uh, Grace Law, Lan Chan Marples, and Weiling. Um, and yeah, we're standing in front of one of the pieces of art that we uh, uh, worked with the community on. Um, it was called Harbin Gate Remembrance. And so um, Harbin Gate, uh, you know, I'll just talk about this one project. Um, we've done a few different projects, but this project was essentially how the group got together. And we, uh, yeah, in 2017, we the Harbin Gate was removed. And so this is in Chinatown South um, to make way for the LRT. And this really prompted us to, you know, think about how as um, how as a community have we really, um, you know, we ha we had no time to really think about the impacts of it, and and there was like very little space for us to gather our thoughts and reflect as a community on on what the Harbin Gate meant for us, and so that's kind of what prompted us to create these uh a way for the community to engage and to write their memories their thoughts their any any types of things uh around uh what they wanted to to talk, think about for the Hartman gate and so we hung uh, a bunch of community um banners and so people people basically could write um their thoughts and wishes um and then we we hung them on to the construction site um uh, fence where the where the Harbin Gate was, and so that's these are some different photos that we that we had from and we had the, these are from the engagements that we had of folks in the community that uh, participated, and so yeah that's us hanging it. But yeah, I feel like my twenty minutes might be like definitely up. I, 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 and I see, did people say anything in the chat? Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. I, you know, I don't want to ramble too much, uh, but I am open to questions now and, or I can keep rambling if you want me to. Um, I mean, I can, I can talk a little more, um, like this, I, I don't know if you guys, uh, folks going on the LRT, like passing the Coliseum uh, station, like right now our Harbin Gate is still sitting in a storage unit. And so this is a photo that I took um, just around Coliseum station. And so, you know, I, I think it's kind of symbolic of this idea that uh, Chinatown is and our community stories and our community histories are disposable. Um, and I, I think the fact that the Chinese community and 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 the, the Chinatown community, which also, I, sorry, I'd like to correct myself. Um, the Chinatown community is not just Chinese community members, right? It's 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 many diverse um uh, cultures of folks and there's like I, I hope you get a sense that um, a, as much as I am very very proud and want and and love working in Chinatown Chinatown has still is still in a state of survival um, and 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 why is that uh, you know I think that there's there's something, at least for me, to think about when my culture and even, you know, internally, I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily the, the main focus um, of, of the way that Canada imagines a Canadian, right? And so that, that is a very loose way of, of almost just saying, like, I don't, I feel like there's still racism that exists, like systemic racism and and a lot of injustice. And so a huge part of my own personal work with and, and wanting to get involved in Chinatown is to see how we can uplift um, not just the stories that are there, but really show that these are really important spaces um, that we have to recognize uh, and, and are really important to Edmonton's like history, 
right? And so, you know, even symbolically, if, if we have like our, you know, our Chinatown gate that was in our Chinatown for 30 years, removed and just left in a storage yard, you know, what does that say about the disposability of our cultures? Like, what does that say about, you know, all the really, really important and beautiful memories that people have connecting and taking photos um, and being really proud about their culture in, in a city that, you know, often makes us feel like we're not, we're not equal, right? And so I think these are the types of questions that, um, you know, leave us in Aya and, and us as, as community members to, to really think hard about and how do we like act on it. And so that's why I think, you know, this idea of reclaiming Edmonton's dice first stories is just, you know, something that is really important to contribute on. Thank you.